In this lesson, I want to address the issue of random number generation. Why random number generation? Well, in many scientific investigations, we will need to generate data in some sort of random fashion or in a fashion that is going to adhere to a probability distribution of some particular type, perhaps maybe to fill the need of a stochastic process. In any case, the C++ compiler has the capability of generating numbers at random. That might seem like a contradiction. As an example, I remember when I was young in school, when we needed random numbers, we looked into the book. There was a table of numbers, and uh, we were taught how we could extract numbers of certain sizes from the, the tables, and they would be supposedly random, which, of course, begs the question, what's random and what's deterministic? And we could get into a long, uh, heated argument about what is randomness and what isn't randomness. But I'll tell you straight off that random number generation in a compiler is certainly not random. And so why do we call it random number generation? Well, it's actually what is known as pseudo-random number generation. And again, what do we mean by that? Well, I think what the key here is that what appears random is random to us as human beings. And so if we take a look at at least one of the popular random number generation formulas, which is the linear non-congruential pseudo-random number generator, it looks like this, where x0, the first value in the sequence of, so, of so-called random numbers, is the seed value. It's the starting value. If we take that starting value, x0, and substitute it into this formula as xn, that means n is 0, and multiply it by a, add b, and mod by c, we end up with x1. So we have a sequence x0, x1, we take x1 and plug that into the formula, and that's going to generate x2, and plug that into the formula, and that'll generate x3, and so forth and so on. We end up with a sequence of what are seemingly random values. So what is it that this formula has going for it that makes the numbers appear random? It's this operator right there, the mod operation. That is what throws randomness into the results of this computation. Incidentally, the constants a, b, and c are best chosen as uh, very large, mutually primed constants. OK, I don't know what the formulation is for the random number generator in the new compiler that we use but I do know what's there, and we can generate random numbers with a function call by the name of rand. Now, we have not covered functions yet, but we can still use them. If you simply follow the syntax that I'm going to show you here, let's look at this little program. I am going to output that right there. This is a function call. Now, you've seen some function calls so far. This particular function call is calling the random number generator, and what we're going to produce here is a column of seemingly random numbers. So if we run it, this perhaps is what we get. They look pretty darn random. Rand is going to produce, one call to Rand will produce a number that runs in the interval from zero, inclusive, to a constant max Rand. It's a very large integer. I think, though I don't know, that it is on the order of 4 billion. That is the largest value that can be stored in four bytes. And we get this column of numbers. Now, the curious thing about this is if we run this little program again, I'm going to get exactly the same uh, listing of numbers. So why is that? Well, the way this works is that the random number generator is going to seed or start that uh, list of values with exactly the same number and hence, because it's a formula, it will produce exactly the same sequence of numbers. Well, this is actually pretty useless. This is not random at all. You can change that. You can change it by using another built-in function called srand. And srand takes a single argument of type int, a long int. That would be what I'm passing in here, although this is of a different form. And that will start the random number generator at a particular spot. If you ignore what I have here for the time being, you can write this very same program and substitute in for what I've got written here as time null. Just put in 5. 
run the program, and you'll get a sequence of numbers. If you run it again, you'll get exactly the same sequence of numbers. If you substitute in the number 7, say, you're going to get a completely different set of numbers because you're starting the sequence at a different place. And that mod operator is going to give you a completely different a sequence of numbers. It's going to look very, very random. Now, again, seeding with a constant value just doesn't do you a whole lot of good. What you really need is something that changes all the time. With each run of the program, if you seed it with a different value, then you're going to get a different sequence of numbers. So how can we do that? Well, we do it with a call to the time clock. And that's exactly what we've done here. I need to pound include C time. That gives me access to the time clock. And I'm going to seed the random number generator here, srand, and I pass to it another function call. It's called time. That's a member function of the C time library. And you pass to it null, which in this case is actually zero. And what you end up with is that this value here is the number, I believe, the number of seconds passed since January 1 of 1971. I might be off by a year. It doesn't matter. The point is that number is a long integer and it changes every second. So if I run this program first time, I will get some listing of values. If I run it again, more than a second later, which is usually the case it takes you that long to press the buttons, you get another sequence of numbers. Now, if you're really quick, you produce the executable and press the button twice within one second, most of the time you'll get the same sequence of numbers. Every once in a while, two presses of the button will span a particular second and you'll get different. But usually, you're going to get a different sequence of numbers. Now, one thing to remember in this is to call SRAND here, inside main at the beginning of your program, never ever put that inside of a loop. If you were to put this SRAND call inside this loop, what you would do is you would generate 10 copies of exactly the same number. Let's say the first value was 23. You get 23, 23, 23, 23, dot, 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 23. Because you're seeding the random number generator just before you call the function RAND, and I've taken all the randomness out of it. Also, since programs run so fast, if you put SRAND inside of a loop, that loop it can execute 10 billion times within one second. So you call the seeding of the random number generator over and over again within that loop. So to wrap up here again, you will pound include C time, seed the random number generator once and only once in main, and then every time you call RAND, you're going to get a seemingly random number even though it's actually generated by a formula. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, one more example here. Here, as before, I'm going to see the random number generator. I pound include C time. I declare next value of type long. And I'm going to jump to a for loop that runs 100,000 times. And I'm going to generate random numbers in a particular range, not from zero to max rand, but in this case, I'm going to go from 0 to rand mod 100. So when you take any number, which you can think of rand as being any number, and mod it by 100, what's its value going to be? Well, it could be 0, and it can be anything in between up to and including 99. So what I've done here is when I call rand and mod by 100, I'm generating a number at random in the interval 0 to 99. If I then say, well, okay, if rand mod 100 is less than or equal to 34, I'm picking up which values? 0, 1, 2, 3, on up to 34. There's 35 numbers there. And if so, if it's in that set, I'm going to output hello, and otherwise, I'm going to output goodbye. How many numbers are there other than the first 35? There are 65. So approximately 35% of the time, I'm going to get hello from the output here, and approximately 65% of the time, I'm going to get goodbye. So this is one way that you can limit the range. Now, if you need to generate numbers from A to B, 
and B not zero and or any other particular number, say you want to generate between 30 and uh, 62, well then you're going to have to do a little bit of algebra and I challenge you to write a formula that will do just that. You know, it's nothing but algebra, but it's not as easy as you might think. Give it a try. Of course, it, you want to do this in abstract or general terms. Call your minimum value min and your maximum value max and write a formula using RAND that will do just that. That is to say, generate values in the interval from min to max. That's a challenge for the day. And with a not so random ending slide, that is the end of my discussion of random numbers and random number generation, which are not really very random.